Hey, I wanted to let you know there are some dates below in the description of some live events coming up that you uh, may not want to miss. And also, while I have your attention, check out my playlists to see some content that maybe you missed already that uh, you'll be glad you found. That's all. Hey guys, Peter Franson here from ChristianGeekCentral.com and Spirit Blade Productions. Uh, here to take a look with you at a game called Raven Sword Shadowlands. This was made by Crescent Moon Games. You can get it on the PlayStation Store for the PS4 for $6.99. I want to thank the uh, publisher Rat Ratalika Games, if that's how you say that, SL, uh, for the review copy of this game. This little bit of history was originally uh, published on mobile, I believe, in 2012, and then was ported to PC in 2013, just so you have an idea of kind of what we're going to be uh, stepping into here. What caught my eye about this game was, well, first of all, the description of what kind of game it was, and just seeing a little bit of game footage. The description reads, After the fall of Ravengard, the world descended into chaos. The kingdom of Tyreus stood alone against a sea of dark elven invaders. The raven sword was lost and the dark times began. As a descendant of an ancient line of kings, you alone have the power to wield the raven sword again and restore that which was lost. Explore, this was uh, kind of like some key text here that caught my attention, explore a vast and richly detailed world, gather powerful weapons and items, increase your skills, and follow a deep storyline to solve the mysteries of the kingdom of Tyreus. Seamlessly switch between first and third person view while mastering different skills, making quest altering and reputation altering decisions. And the features, all this from the description on the PlayStation Store, the features read uh, numerous options for character customization and completing quests, battle various enemy types including huge prehistoric creatures, decision based multi part quests, use various weapons like bows, axes, and swords, and reflex and precision-based combat with blocking and dodging. And so, a lot of the things that I was seeing in the description there, and the fact that I could play it first person, the fact that it was a, a, a fantasy RPG, it was like, you know, I, I'm in the mood to try something like this. Sometimes, you know, you can find one of these games that's uh, an um, indie game, even an older one like this, that's just kind of a diamond in the rough or a little gem that maybe doesn't look like anything special but uh, on the surface but has like systems and gameplay that I could really connect with and that the the potential to find a game like that in Raven Sword Shadowlands was what made me want to give it a try so uh, let me get into it and tell you what uh, how those expectations were met um, so we are outside of the city right now actually I'll go back inside the city Now, I'm playing this on the PlayStation 5 through backwards compatibility, so I can't tell you firsthand if it runs great on PS4. I don't have any personal experience with that. Um, L1 brings up this uh, mini-map so you kind of know where you're going, what you're doing. I'm looking for the potion shop. Uh, so you might... Uh, you might be forgiven for comparing this to the, the Elder Scrolls a little bit. It has a little bit of that... Uh, that, that vibe at a glance um you know you've got a, a town that you can walk through in first person i you can do it in third person i prefer first person although i do wish that the camera would bob up and down while i'm in first person as it stands i, I seem to be just kind of gliding along um townspeople you can talk to they're not always going to have anything to say or anything you know a quest to give you certainly uh, okay that's the fletcher oh here we go this is the potion shop I'm getting ready to set out on a quest. It's uh, one of those fantasy stories where you are looking for the ultimate weapon, but to find the ultimate weapon you have to find a, a collection of sacred objects that will unlock the location of the ultimate weapon, and so you're going through different sections of the game and uh, I guess beating big bosses to get a, another one of these gemstones or whatever that will unlock the, the ultimate weapon. Um, so, uh, Greetings, you, friend. You've got a lot of characters that will have some voice acting when they first introduce themselves, but after that, it's it's a lot of text. Uh, and so, the potions you have on uh, on sale are health recovery, energy recovery, which is like mana, and then a combination of both. Uh, so I'm not seeing a lot of complexity in the the potion system right now. Um, the, this is where I would say at a glance, you know, is important to keep in mind when comparing this to the Elder Scrolls. 
you know, uh, obviously the you know the graphics are, are low res, has kind of a PlayStation 2 look to it, and given that it was a mobile game in 2012, that's almost 10 years ago. Uh, you know, that, that's that shouldn't be a big shocker. Um, and if graphics are something that's going to be important to you, then this just isn't going to be the game for you. Um, but, like, some objects are interactable, like this goblet here, I can steal it. And goblets actually, you know, uh, you can get some coin for them early on in the game, and so they're worth grabbing if you can, you know, do it without getting caught. And some of them will be sitting on tables, uh, you know, for free. They won't have the, the hand icon won't be read. But, but see, nothing else here can, in, can be interacted with. And so it's a bit of a, like, you know, anybody's guess when you're making your way through this game of what can be interacted with and what cannot. Uh, largely, th the world is not near as interactive as you would, I think, it, want it to be, again, if you're comparing it to Elder Scrolls. Which is, in one sense, unfair to compare it to Elder Scrolls, and in another sense, I think, is a little bit fair because it, it does seem to certainly be inspired in a, a few ways by the Elder Scrolls. Being an open-world, first-person, fantasy RPG, there just aren't many of those to start with. The score even reminds me a little bit of, a, of an Oblivion style, or even a Morrowind style score. And it's actually kind of a, the high point of the game for me. Um, when other elements of the game have kind of left me wanting, the score has always been very pleasant to listen to. And I feel like sets the mood appropriately for me. All right, what is this, a rat? Oh! I think I'm pretty, pretty over-leveled for this area here. Now, the... The responsiveness in going to, um... In going to... Uh, gamepad, and using the analog sticks to, like, control the camera... Uh, there's a little bit of floatiness to it, like when I... I mean, you're not going to be able to see it because my timing isn't precise enough between the, the, the video of me and the video of the game. Um, but there's just a, a teeny little bit of, of drifting left that the camera does even after I have let go of the button. Um, and I would rather it kind of stopped more quickly, uh, but there doesn't seem to be an option for that. Speaking of, let me take you through kind of what your options are. Uh, you can control the view distance, which I just put it up to max, uh, since, you know, the, the console can clearly handle it. Sensitivity did not help me with my camera issues. I've got it dialed up so it's as sensitive as it can be. Uh, the music, let me turn that down just a wee bit. Uh, I've got it dialed down to easy. That's usually how I like to play games, and especially as I'm getting a handle on, uh, like, how a game is going to play. Um... And uh, this one, I'm glad that I have it dialed down to easy, um, because every once in a while I'll experience some difficulty spikes, and the combat is not what I would really like it to be. Uh, let me see here. Oh, jeez. I saw a spell not long ago about, or a item about reducing fall damage. Maybe I'll be wishing very soon that I had that. <laughs> Um, let's see. Oh, I can maybe go the long way around here. But the way that the... The way the combat works is it's right trigger, but holding down right trigger doesn't do anything. It's not until you actually release that your weapon swings. Um, and so it's not about how fast you can actually hit the button. It's how fast you can release the button. Uh, and so there's definitely kind of a delay that is uh, not what I want in combat of this type. And on top of that, I find that when I'm engaged in melee combat with some enemies, the the right trigger seems to be unresponsive sometimes. Like, it just won't even detect that I have uh, hit the trigger and released. And I'm not sh I mean, it, it's not that I didn't push the trigger all the way, because even on a partial trigger and release, the weapon still swings. And I've wondered, is it because the monster roared or did something to temporarily stun me? And I, I don't know. Um, maybe it's just kind of a, uh, a defect of the porting process and getting it over onto a console. Um, I, I don't know. Oops. You know, I needed to get that meat anyway. 
Um, you, uh, you, you are required to eat in this game. If you don't, then after a while your regeneration um, will slow down. And the game just automatically gets you to eat. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh yeah, square to bring up this uh, this menu here. Um, so it's right trigger to cycle through these main areas of equipment and stats, talent, quest, map. Uh, and then I'm using the right stick to cycle through uh, these sections at the bottom here um, of my equipment. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, this is all my meat. You do have uh, carrying uh, restrictions. You won't be able to see it because of where my picture-in-picture -picture is sitting, but uh, I, uh, I'm currently at 55.3 out of 220 weight units, I assume pounds or something like that. Um, and so, yeah, I'm doing good on food. Uh, I'm going to be digging into my rat meat, though. It's good that I picked up that rat meat because I'll need to start eating it soon. And... Uh, you get a little thing that pops up that says when you've eaten something, it'll tell you what you've eaten. But beyond that, um, you don't know like when your supply is close to running out. You just have to get into your menu now and then and check and see. The sound design... Um, yeah, I'm, the, the, there's something about the walking sound that there are sounds of like that I would expect of like gravel and whatnot and a little bit of brush but along with it there's a little crackling and popping that sounds to me like a campfire it's kind of an odd little noise and I at first I thought is there a campfire around me somewhere and eventually figured out it was only happening when I was walking um let's see here so let's look at my stats. I've got some attribute points I haven't spent yet. Uh, but these are your, you know, you just have these four basic stats. Uh, strength, which uh, improves the weight you can carry in, does melee damage. Agility, ranged weapon damage. Endurance increases your maximum health. And vigor increases your maximum energy. So very, very basic stats. Um, and I'll wait on spending attribute points for now. Uh, so you've got these talents. I really haven't messed with these talents uh, at all. Um, so we've got, let's take a look here. We've got acrobatics, increases your maximum jump height and reduces falling damage by 10%. Good fortune, you receive a 5% bonus to the amount of gold found on enemies and inside chests. Fast learner, it's an experience boost. Riding, I haven't even used mounts yet. There's a lot of this game that I haven't gotten into. Uh, run speed increases by 5%. Let me get into combat here. Reduces chance of being knocked down by an enemy. That hasn't happened to me yet, so it doesn't feel urgent. Range attacks, 6% bonus damage. 6% uh, bonus damage with melee. 10% bonus the amount of damage you can absorb with a parry or block. Uh, because of the, the kind of the delayed nature of the combat controls, I haven't even really been trying to learn how to block and time my block because it, it already feels very unresponsive and so it feels a little bit like a losing battle to try and uh, appreciate any timing mechanisms since I can't tell the difference between right now between something the game intends and something that may be a glitch and not working like it's supposed to. Uh, health regeneration, okay, that's good. Magic, okay. Uh, sp increases spell damage, increases the regeneration rate of your mana, and uh, reduces energy cost of spells. So yeah, pretty typical here. St stealth, there is a stealth system. Um, I have not tapped into this at all. Increases your movement speed while, hit while hidden by 10%. Additional 20% damage bonus from performing a sneak attack. You have a talent for theft, increasing your chance of successfully pickpocketing items and picking locks by 10%. That's cool, I didn't know there was a pickpocketing type thing. When you go into stealth, um, you just kind of get notified that you are now hidden. And that's by clicking down on the, on the left stick. And uh, I definitely move much slower, but, you know, you can increase your movement speed uh, with that, putting points into that talent. Um, but I haven't been really even trying to be stealthy at all. You can jump. I press circle there to jump. Um, haven't found a whole lot of reasons to jump yet. Sometimes there'll be a little bit of terrain that requires a little bit of jumping. Castle entrance. Okay, now I'm going to save here. Uh, 
One issue I have with the game is, is the nature of saving. I have saved multiple times. It, it seems to let you save any time you want, and yet I have been all the way near, nearly to the end of a dungeon, saved, and then when I experimented, <laughs> which, I, which by the way was, I will get into this water and see if this water will kill me. The water outside didn't kill me. I could walk through rivers and be just fine, but I walked into the water of this cave. Maybe it was, it was an icy cave. Maybe it was supposed to be too cold for me, but yes, I was instantly killed. <laughs> so there's plenty that this game just does not tell you that you're just kind of, at least for me, I was just kind of struggling to figure out. Um, I, not so much that I can't make progress in the game, but just a lot of things that I'm like, what What are you doing? What is, what is supposed to be uh, the case here? And what might be a glitch or, you know, I don't know. Um, let's see here. But, but anyway, when I died, I was spit back to the to the entrance to the dungeon, so I don't know why they were giving me the option to save in the middle of the dungeon or what. Oh, the door is sealed, so I guess I'm not going in there anyway. Um, let's see here, let's take a look at my quest log. Um, so you can choose to track certain quests. I'm not really sure what the advantage is of that. I haven't seen really a marker on the map that's telling me where to go for this main quest that I'm doing right now. Um, I guess, oh, it just puts it at the top of your list, I guess. Uh, but right now I'm doing this, uh, the, the main quest. Um, as far as the map goes, you know, you have the, the mini-map that I showed you earlier, but this is the, the world map. It does not seem to be to scale, or, or uh, it doesn't help you beyond telling you what general area, area you're in. So this little triangle pyramid type icon, that's, that's me, and I'm in the terraces right now. But I'm, it doesn't indicate that I'm south or west or east in the terraces. It just tells me that I'm in the terraces and that's all it's going to tell me. And that can make it a little bit tricky to figure out uh, where I am in relationship to my quest. I, at one point, was supposed to be taking on a quest in the White Iron Peaks. There was a... A uh, big bad that I had to defeat in the White Iron Peaks, and it said it like in the northern reaches of the White Iron Peaks. Well, I went to the White Iron Peaks, I explored as much of this area as I could, didn't find any kind of lair for this bad guy, and then I arrived at the mining camp, and I was like, well, I guess, uh, I guess I don't know where I'm going, I don't know what's going So I decided eventually to explore up to the north of the mining camp, and I did find the layer that I was looking for. This wasn't labeled until I actually arrived at it. Um, so apparently this mining cap, camp, excuse me, is a subsection of a larger area that is called the White Iron Peaks. But since the text size is the same for both places, you know, I, I didn't know. And, and there was no indication of like, okay, well, where's the northern reaches of this White Iron Peaks? I would think it would be here, but apparently this is all part also of the White Iron Peaks. And so, um, navigation, not, uh, not super helpful. I mean, you can get in your, let's see here, in your quest... Uh, in your quest notes, see here, part 12 of the main quest. The second Ravenstone is hidden inside the Citadel of Rordan, an abandoned palace that was once a home to great scholars and philosophers. The Archmage says I should seek the help of a man named Cribbins, who lives in a coastal region known as the Crags far to the south. Okay, coastal region far to the south, so I'm just going to keep going south and follow the coast at every opportunity. Um, I don't think that that's where I am right, right now, but you, you do have a compass, which is helpful. Now, the compass does, let's see, oh, is that because of what's going on in the background? Maybe it is. See, notice at the top there, the border of the uh, the compass changes color like it's blue right now, and then it goes to kind of a brownish, yellowish color. I couldn't figure out if that meant something, like, oh, am I supposed to go in this direction or what? I think it's just changing based on what's in the background. Um, anyway. Um, so, yeah, there's a ton that this game does not tell you. Uh... And I think you have to be in it for the novelty of exploring this game for what it is. Okay, here's a little oddity. Did I just hit an invisible wall here? Um, do you... There does not... I don't know why I would be stopped here. Are the flowers getting in my way? That can't be right. No? Okay. Oh, there we go. There we go.
All right. Just trying to show you my controller, what my controller is doing in comparison to the uh, the game footage. Try to give you guys a better idea of the um, of the nature of the the combat, the control responsiveness. All right, let's see what's in here. Can I swim? Looks almost deep enough to swim in. You can't uh, you can't run in this game. There's just the one speed. And right now I'm wishing it was a lot faster. You know, it's only seven dollars, and yet it's seven dollars. Uh, <laughs> And so I think for an experience like this, this is not something that I would nor that I would spend seven dollars on. Um, this, the only circumstance I can think of where I would buy this game um, would be if it was on sale for about the price of a cup of coffee or like a bag of chips. And a, no, I guess it wasn't the flowers blocking me; just an invisible wall back there. Um, bag of chips and a drink, you know, if it's about like, I don't know, $3, $4, and, and if I was the type of person that, instead of doing that, and, and uh, adding calories to my day, would instead enjoy an evening of play, playing around with some weird game that I found online, you know. Well, what is it that you need? The Lady Catalina resides in the castle upon the hill to the east. Oh, is that where I just was? Yesterday, a group of bandits raided her estate and killed her guards. They are still there holding her hostage even as we speak. I sent word to Avon, but there's been no response. I'm just an old tracker. I feared those ruffians would dispose of me rather quickly. Can you help her? Well, how do I get into the castle? Because if it's the one I'm thinking of, it was locked. The bandits have locked the front gate, but I have a key to the cellar. Excellent. I've been a friend of the family for many years. There is a cavern tunnel that leads into the cellar beneath the castle. Take this key and you can unlock the cellar door to reach the main castle hall. Good luck and I thank you. All right, cellar key. I will free Lady Cat, Cat, whatever her name is. So, uh, you know, it has nowhere near the depth of of something like Oblivion uh, in terms of interactions with the world. It's very, very limited in that sense. But um, there are not a ton of first person fantasy RPGs, whether they were made for, you know, well, maybe in mobile, actually, they're a, a good chunk <laughs> there, but, but you know, playing on a console on your couch with a gamepad, it's a pretty small number of first-person fantasy action RPGs, and so if for some reason you're really wanting to scratch that itch, and you're willing to put up with some other things, and or you, you know, you wait for a sale and you're just like, oh, I'll just do this as a fun little Friday night activity. And you just kind of say to yourself, I'm probably never going to play this again, again, but just for the novelty of trying this little game, let's do it. Um, I think that if I could be in that headspace, I could see myself spending maybe three to five dollars on this one. But that's not normally how I spend my gaming money or my my fun money in general. I am, if I didn't mention this before, I'm about three hours into the game. Uh, so I feel like I have a, a handle on what the basic experience is. And there's something you notice that like, uh, let me go out here for a second. I've gotten used to this because I've been playing this for about three hours, but you know, you, you wouldn't look at this and necessarily say cave entrance. That actually looks a little bit more like a cave entrance than some of the other cave entrances I've seen. This could just as easily, but from some things I've seen, be a cave entrance. But it is not. Um, and so there's just some design choices that, apart from the limita limitations of the, the, the graphics, the, f the fidelity of the graphics, there are there's still some design choices that I feel like could have been made to make things uh, clearer. All right, let's go ahead and save. Get my weapon out here. I thought I had, okay, I do have it out. I had a club before, and for some reason the club was hovering like right in the middle of my, of my view. It was uh, kind of an odd choice. 
But thankfully, this big, huge hammer I picked up does not seem to sit in the same position. My lady, everyone knows that all castles have a vault. Just tell us where it is, and we'll let you go. The boys and I just need a little spending money to get us through the tough times. There is no vault, and no treasure, vile beast. And if there were, I would never divulge its whereabouts to one such as yourself. I despise you, and your evil brethren. Alright. Well, let's kill the evil brethren! There we go. Alright. Now some of that is the slowness of the weapon that I chose, I think. Um, oh, I forgot to use the... I got to show you this, the fire spell. I have a fire spell. Or is, it, is my ice spell equipped right now? Oh yeah, I've got the ice spell equipped. So that's the ice spell. It can slow down enemies. I haven't even tried that one yet. Let's talk to this lady here. You proved yourself a skilled warrior and a loyal friend. Oh, it is Catalina. Okay. My family and I are indebted to you. Well, how about that vault? <laughs> In the chest over there, you'll find a piece of armor that was crafted by my most talented blacksmith. Please take it as a reward for your deed today. Bye! Alright. Let me see here. Do I have... That's the only weapon I have right now. I sold the other ones, right? Okay, I did. Oh wait, well let's let's try this. Let's just equip this, see if this one swings any faster. Swing! Oh, didn't even respond that first time. You also deplete uh, mana when you're doing your swing attack, so your mana bar serves as a stamina bar as well. Um, how do I, let's see, left trigger is block. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty pretty slow to get that up. So I haven't really been messing around with that. Um, so anyway, that is, uh, that's the game. I don't feel like I need to show you much more of it. I often comment on uh, themes, any kind of like uh, moral, philosophical, or spiritual ideas being kind of like played around with in the, in the narrative of, of entertainment. And uh, this is very, very basic. It's not leaning on story at all. It's just the basic setup for the big bad, and then you gotta get the awesome weapon, and then kill the big bad. So they're not going for any kind of themes that I can tell. Uh, maybe deeper into the game they are, I don't know. I was kind of hoping to discover something that had uh, more depth to it, something that I never would have been able to experience before because I'm not a mobile or a PC player, uh, and maybe discover this hidden gem. And uh, I think that, you know, at the time that it came out on mobile, it probably had some of those hidden gem qualities to it, for sure. I mean, 10 years ago on a mobile phone, I think this would have been cool to have when you're stuck in line somewhere. But when you are not stuck in line somewhere and you're sitting at home and you're playing on your console, uh, it, for me, it's, there's going to be way too many other experiences I would rather have. But, I mean, perhaps if you are the type of gamer who likes to get games that are really cheap just for the novelty of going, ooh, what is this weird little thing? Then, I mean, uh, then Ravensword Shadowlands may be one that uh, you will want to check out. Not for me, but maybe for you. I would love to get your thoughts or questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. For more chat about geek entertainment, answers to your questions, and news from the wider world of Christian geekery, get the Christian Geek Central podcast today on iTunes and other podcast services.